Yeah. Okay, so quantization of vortices. So first of all, I have to explain what are vortices because Martin didn't tell you, okay? So question one, what are vortices? And then of course, question two, uh, what does it mean to quantize vortices, yeah? Okay, so um, uh, in my lectures, quantizing vortices means quantizing their moduli space. So there are some things I need, I need to explain what are uh, vortex moduli spaces, which is the title of the whole program. So this is basically why this is a warm up. It's just a warm up for everything. So they're moduli spaces. Okay, so um, let me get started with question one. So uh, this is just going to be just very basic and very slow. So vortices, are, um, so configuration fields well, for, for me, fields are usually uh, pairs. So A phi, sometimes I write this as DA. So phi is a matter field, which is what basically uh, it was in Martin's lecture. But now we have uh, this thing called A, which is a connection. So we have a gauge symmetry. So this is going to be different from Martin, Martin's story. Okay, so on some space, okay, so the space is going to be a manifold. Okay, so satisfying some PDEs. Okay, and identified, so these pairs are going to be identified under some symmetry, gauge symmetry. Under gauge symmetry. Okay, so now, so they can be considered either sta uh, in the static sense, okay, so static, Static vortices, they, they don't depend on time, okay? Don't depend on time. Okay? Uh, and usually uh, we, we assume that they are uh, stable energetically. There's some energy and they are stable. They are some, you know, the medium of this energy. Uh, so maybe um, energetically stable. Okay. So in this case, the manifold, the, the manifold that I write here, the manifold, so the manifold um, is going to be uh, Kähler. So this is the space where the vortex, so it's not Kähler in the sense that Martin was using the Kähler metric. This is the metric already in the moduli space. So now I'm saying the, 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 the space where the, these objects live is scalar, it's a scalar manifold. So it's a man, it's a, given by a triple. Uh, it could be the manifold, a complex structure, and uh, a scalar form, for example. So in a scalar uh, manifold, there are three structures that are compatible the complex structure, the metric, the Riemannian structure, and the synthetic structure. And they are com compatible. And you usually give two of them. The other one is determined by the other two. Okay? So it's scalar. So therefore, uh, even dimensional, okay? So there's the case where you can see the vortices dynamically. Okay, so, um, so, this, so this has time involution, there's some time evolution of configurations in an even dimensional space. So you can say the, the manifold here now is, even, is is um, all dimensional. So the manifold is uh, a product like this, okay? Where this is a, this I is parameterizing time and uh, Y is even dimensional and this is, uh, yeah, this is all dimensional. 
Okay, so there's going to be so the so there's going to be a metric here, which is of the form that Martin wrote down, which is something like that. So maybe see the see the Riemannian. Okay, and there's going to be a simplification. Actually, in the whole program, this, this simplification is going to be taking the whole program two weeks. We're going to consider the case where y is just a, a surface, so a real surface. So it's going to be a so I, I'm going to write it like that, okay? So it's an oriented Riemannian surface, which means it has a metric, but then it is all, all so the, the, it, this is already enough for a Keller metric in, uh, in two dimensions, okay? Okay, so in my lectures, I usually, I'm going to consider mostly to these, so what's in this sense, static, and I'm going to consider their moduli space or moduli space of these, these static objects. Um, but then when I specify what, what I mean by quantization, I need to make some assumption about the dynamics. So in this way, the dynamics also plays a role, okay? So let me just write it down. So. Um, so this is the, the case of these lectures. However, so um, yeah, so I'm, I'm saying that I'm going to quantize moduli spaces, but then the way, the way the quantization is set up uh, makes already an assumption about the dynamics. There's different types of, of, of vortex dynamics and I need to make a choice. Okay. So um, anyway, so it's so associated to each configuration. So to each pair A phi. Okay, so there is an, there is an energy density. Okay. So it's a, it's some real positive function, depending on this on this uh, on these fields, okay. So um, so vortices. Um, so they are extended objects. They are extended. On the let's say on the on the, on the surface sigma, okay. So and they have to, and, and they have some shape. Because you can you can just ask where, where is this energy concentrated? So this profile energy will have some uh, yeah maximum at some point and so on, and you can sort of start asking about the structure of the of the configuration. Okay, have some shape. So now I'm going to show you some some vortices and some uh, vortices doing some dynamics. So can I now have the can I have the screen, please? Hello. Okay, so I'm going to show you two types of dynamics. So the so first order dynamics. There's, uh, there's more choices, but this is like the, the sort of, these are two of the, so sort of, they give the flavor of the, the, the possibilities. Um, vortices with shape, okay. So here it's a picture of um, the energy density of two vortices in some uh, manifold. So it's actually the hyperbolic disk, okay. And now we're going to see them moving through first order dynamics, so, you know, they sort of go around each other. You see, they, they have these peaks, they have some kind of cores and some structure around the point and the energy density sort of concentrated around that point. So you can see, you, you should think of this as the, you know, the, like a graph of the, okay, of the energy density. And now this is the second order vortex dynamics, which actually uh, Martin mentioned in, a, in uh, answering a question from uh, Oscar, right? 
but now you're going to see things maybe a bit more clearly. So now we're going to have, um, so in the other case, we had, we start with the configuration and they will evolve automatically without any more data. So here we have the configuration, the configuration you see, which looks like the other one of the other ones. But now we need to give them some velocity, okay? Also, we need to see in the second order dynamics, you need to uh, tell them where, in which direction to move, okay? So here I'm going to give them some velocity where they are sort of going in, the, in opposite directions across these, uh, these ray sort of joining them. So they're going to do the following. They, yeah, they, sorry, they, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to move them, uh, you know, to move them uh, towards each other and they're going to collide. And then as you see, the energy density here is a bit strange, like circular symmetric, circular symmetric and they scatter by 90 degrees, okay? So this is the geodesic that um, Martin, I think, tried to uh, draw, okay? So this is a geodesic in this metric that I'm going to uh, explain that Martin is going to tell you about tomorrow, yeah? Which is, uh, which is similar to the metric that he talked about today for lumps, which are vortices without any gauge symmetry, okay? Okay, so um, a bit more detail. You can you can get rid of yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so some more detail. Um, so again, I'm going to look at the static case. So um, so the so A is the gauge field. Okay, so it's a connection in some principal bundle. Okay, so there's a principal bundle over the the space that you where you are working, like the surface sigma. Okay, and it's a connection on the on the on, on the bundle. Okay, so principal bundle with the structure group G. Okay, so phi, which uh, which is this matter field. Some, uh, sometimes people call it the Higgs field. Okay, it's going to be uh, for a differential geometry. It will be a section of an associated bundle. So you can associate to a principal bundle um, another a fiber bundle with the fiber um, any space where where the group G is acting. Okay, so this will be so this will be another bundle with now with fiber X, okay? And phi will be a section of these, okay? So this X is going to be a space, as I said, where, where G acts, okay? But to, to set up this kind of vortex um, geometry, we need to require that this action is, uh, so Hamiltonian and holomorphic. So this requires that, so X has some geometric stretch. So we're going to assume that X is also um, a killer manifold. Okay, so X is also a killer manifold. Okay, so it also has its own uh, complex structure and um, symplectic structure. Okay, and this condition Hamiltonian is going to be, uh, this is something that is very basic for these lectures. Okay, so it means that, um, yeah, there's a moment map, right? I don't know if everyone knows about this, but uh, let me just write down. So moment map, there is a moment map. So there's a Lie algebra to G. Uh, okay, so if there is this action, there's a, a map from the Lie algebra to the vector fields on X. Okay, and then a map uh, which, uh, so from X to the dual Lie algebra, which is equivariant and satisfy these equations. So the equation for, uh, yeah. Um, so I call this map maybe, you know, A to psi A, okay? These are the, the infinitesimal vector field generating action. And uh, yeah, and the, okay. So, the, so this map is uh, satisfied this equation. It has, it is a G equivariant. There's a, 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 an action of G on X. There's an action of G, uh, of course, in the Lie algebra, the joint action. And then, of course, also in the dual Lie algebra. 
And then we need also to identify the dual Lie algebra with the Lie algebra itself by another equivariant isomorphism. So this map here will be equivariant, the composition. Uh, yes, yes, okay, yeah. So let's, let's just maybe say that, so G compact. Okay, so um, yeah. So the moduli space, the moduli space, vertices so it's going to be so it's obtained as um okay so uh, a quotient okay so in in martin's lecture there was no quotient because there was no symmetry okay so quotient uh, of the space of the space of uh, configurations it could be the um, so solutions of these uh, PDEs that are not specifying, okay? Um, in some fixed class, in some uh, in some homotopy class, let's call it H. So I'm going to call it uh, M H. Okay, so quotient of that space by the the group of um, so the group of automorphisms. Of the principal bundle. Okay, so this is what is called the gauge group. Okay, so um, yeah. So this is the uh, the so the general setup. I'm going to restrict mostly to the most the simplest example uh, where x is, is just going to be c and uh, g is going to be u1. So it's compact, as Sushmita said. So it's the, this is the simplest compact group on the simplest space where it acts on trivially. So this is going to be the, the also what uh, I think uh, Oscar will explore because just it's much easier. Um, um, okay, so um, I told you what vortices are and now how to quantize them. So we want to quantize uh, in some sense this space. Okay, so how can we quantize them? So the, the so there is no, no systematic way of quantizing modular spaces, okay? So we, um, we will proceed by example. So, the, so there's no, no, no systematic way of quantizing modular spaces. And we will proceed by example. Okay. Okay. Uh, and of course, we're going to restrict this case of, of, of vortices. So, uh, quantizing modular space of vortices on Riemann surfaces. Okay. So, the examples in my lectures are going to be um, uh, mostly in the spirit of geometric quantization. There's, there are other ways of doing quantization. There's deformation quantization. There's many different ways. I, I'm going to stick to a particular um, setting, okay? So what is geometric quantization? So uh, I'm going to uh, say this more systematically, but uh, well, it's some, some way of uh, getting from uh, classical mechanics, which in this case is going to be a symplectic manifold, Symplectic manifold, which we, we regard as a phase space, and it has an algebra of functions, which are the classical observables. And then we want to um, use some recipe to extract out of these functions operators on some Hilbert space. So we need to, to do all these constructions. We need to construct the Hilbert space um, and, um, and so on, okay? So more detail later. I'm not going to say more than that, okay? So the phase spaces that we're going to consider Okay, the phase spaces. Um, in our examples are going to be, um, so now I'm going to look at these uh, two cases. And so in the first case, I'm going to look at the moduli space of vortices, okay, with the, so it's a, a, I have to specify symplectic manifold. So the symplectic manifold is going to be the 
um, the symplectic structure of the L2 metric, which is Keller, as Martin advertised. Okay, so this is going to be the phase space. So this is the case for first order vortex dynamics. Okay, um, so this is mostly what I'm going to explore today if I have time and in lecture two. Okay, and uh, and this uh, and what I want to develop here is the simplest example of what people would call holomorphic or Kähler quantization. Okay. So the second setting, and this is appropriate for second order vortex dynamics. Okay, it's to take the cotangent bundle of the, of the modal space in the canonical metric. Okay. So here, uh, the L2 geometry is still playing a role because it is not the same, it's not here, but uh, to construct the observables, I will use this is the, so the, so, may, uh, so the, this L2 geometry will be used uh, when, uh, so to in, in uh, constructing observables. Okay. So what is this canonical, uh, well, the canonical um, structure is the, the one that uh, everyone has seen, uh, you know, DPI, DQI. In this, in this example, in this setting, you might, uh, yeah, so Q, the QIs are just like in Martin's lecture. They are the, the moduli, okay, the Q, QI, the coordinate, coordinates um, on the moduli space, okay? Although Martin was not really dealing with the quotient, yeah? And the PIs are going to be uh, coordinates on, um, on the cotangent fibers of the, uh, yeah, okay? The, the QI are going to, the PI are going to be coordinates here. Okay? So I already said that, uh, yeah, we're going to construct, to uh, uh, restrict these uh, case of line bundles. And uh, a variation of all of these is, uh, so, so here we uh, we're going to construct uh, yeah so a, a Hubble space of waveforms, uh, sorry of wave functions right of wave functions, and here we can uh, upgrade that so um, maybe I'll write it also, uh, so yeah so um, we might want to upgrade um, wave functions, which is the standard. Um, formulation of uh, geometric quantization, which is a generalization of the quantum mechanics you've learned uh, in your undergraduate courses. Uh, but we can upgrade these to waveforms uh, to deal with supersymmetry. Okay. So not only we, we can, uh, people are interested in uh, vortices, they are interested in in uh, space of fields that are more complicated that uh, have not, uh, also fermions. And you have to relate the bosons to, to the fermions. And uh, you know, to, in, the, in, the, in the end, you, you're going to do some, something a bit, more, uh, a bit more general. And you, you have forms of all degrees and degree mod, mod two is going to tell you whether it's a component, uh, a fermion or boson component. In, um, Okay, so um, I think this is the, the this, this, I think, are you warming up enough right now already? Yeah, so I think this is just the very, very basics. Okay, and now I'm continuing with the more basic stuff, which is setting up the simplest example of vortices in line bundles, but uh, in, uh, in a more concrete way. So I'm not going to really uh, write many things in coordinates. This is for Martin, Martin has this job in this uh, first week to do as he, as, he, as he has done today already very well, you know, doing calculations with coordinates and things are functions from a space to another space. And okay, so we are dealing with the geometry. So, um, so vortices in line bundles. Okay, so vortices in line bundles. So Martin has this um, 
policy that he does not tolerate much compact surfaces, sigma, compact sigmas. He tolerates a little bit of the sphere, right? But not beyond that. So um, we are, I'm going to provoke him by writing sigma just like this, of course, already, okay? Sigma, and, uh, and Oscar is smiling now, okay? So, um, yeah, so let me just say, so these are the conventions. So this is a, com a Riemannian compact oriented surface as before. It's, it might have some genus, positive genus, possibly. Um, it has, um, yeah, so it has a metric, it has a complex structure, it has a symplectic structure, which is just the area form of the metric, okay? And the fibers, as I said, are, are just, uh, yeah, uh, C with its usual uh, inner products, okay? And usual action of U1, which is just rotating around the origin. This is the circle. Okay, so I write usually that, uh, you know, the associated bundle, because now it's going to be a line bundle. The fibers are going to be copies of the complex plane. So this is the convention that I, I'm going to follow. Uh, yeah, I'll write it like this. Yeah, this is the total space of the line bundle. This is the typical fiber, right? So this might look a bit strange, but I'm going to write, I'm going to put a, a bar over the, the total space when I indicate that there is a, uh, there's a metric structure. So in this case, a Hermitian structure. So this thing here is the is uh, so is a signal for uh, emission structure. Okay. So this is the metric structure on X that I said that uh, low, uh, at the point is just the inner product on C. Okay. So now let me just write for the for the first time the vortex equation the uh, vortex equations in, the, in the, the first time ever in this program, okay? So we have these uh, pairs, dA, phi, okay? So we usually say that there are two vortex equations, okay? One equation says that, so it's written like this, okay? It means that phi is holomorphic. But now you're doing, you're dealing with sections of, um, so phi is the section of this bundle. So phi uh, is a section, but it has to be differentiated with the, uh, not as Martin likes to differentiate he, uh, his lumps, but with, uh, with, uh, with this uh, covariance derivative. Okay, so this, this is the first vortex equation. Okay. Um, so the, what I'm using here is that the connection splits into a, a, a del bar, a del and del bar operator. You go right, yeah, okay. And this is determined just by the, the complex structure on, uh, yeah, on C, which is just usual multiplication by I, right? And, and the complex structure on, on the base sigma, which is the, you know, the structure of the uh, Riemann surface, okay? So concretely, dA is just uh, I over two dA, okay? Okay, so, um, the second, the second vortex equation, I'm going to write like this. So um, I like to write it just to make things just look a bit easier, like this. Okay. So this is going to be uh, equation V1, equation V2. Okay. So this is, uh, again, you know, this is the, so um, you have heard Martin saying 20 times, phi is holomorphic, right? So here it means that phi is holomorphic. Again, the V1 is just that. But you need a little bit more structure to make this kind of, yeah, make, make sense of these statements. And the second equation is going to, um, so mu is this, this moment map for the, uh, you know, action that I said of, uh, you know, U1 on C, yeah, and, um, and uh, yeah, so FA is the, the curvature of the connection. So FA is the curvature. Okay, so you, um, okay. Okay, so the moment map in this uh, situation, yeah. Well, uh, yes, but I'm going to write down the, sorry? 
Yeah, but let, let me just say what is, what, yeah, there's going to be a term in mu, right? Because mu can add to mu, uh, con, yeah. Let me just do it now. So mu, so for, yeah. So mu, uh, yeah, so this term is going to be, uh, yeah, the emission, yeah, because, yeah, so the moment map, there's an there's a ambiguity to define the moment map. You can add to the moment, to the moment map a constant. It does not affect none of these, uh, of these uh, the equivariants or the other equation, right, where you take the derivative of the moment map. So you can add to it a constant. So I'm going to write here, okay, I think uh, Oscar likes to call this, uh, maybe C sometimes or so, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, but now he sees the constant, he's a bit uh, less nervous. Yeah, okay. So for me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing some, I'm just writing things out in a way, which is the simplest possible because you see, uh, you know, I'm, uh, for me, mu is already the composition, you know, that lands in the Lie algebra because, uh, you know, these are, these are two forms, these are two form with values in the Lie algebra, but the moment map usually is value in the dual of the Lie algebra. So I have to compose with this, um, with this, uh, where is the moment map? Yes. Uh, where is it? I already, okay. Yeah, so the, yeah, there is this uh, map that I had to use between the, the dual Lie algebra. And, yeah, this is, okay. Anyway, so, um, okay. So tau is a constant, a real constant. I'm making, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, using uh, the convention so that, uh, uh, for example, the, the, the curvature is just a two form, real two form. Some people say, well, you know, I want it to be imaginary, but okay, I'm, I'm multiplying by I. Okay, and, um, and the, the, the moment map, as I said again, is the value in the algebra, which I identify just identify with R. Okay, so this is just um, a simple equation for uh, a real two, uh, two forms. Okay, so um, anyway, so um, so these equations, both of, so these equations are invariant under this uh, this group, this gauge group G. Okay, um, so the action here on pairs is uh, yeah. So uh, just explicitly. Um, okay, so. So you can think of an element of, the, of this gauge group as just a, a map uh, from uh, the surface to, the, to uh, R, right? So to, um, uh, to, to U1, right? And then uh, it's just the exponential of some, something which is, yeah, re, uh, I real and anyway. So uh, it's basically just, uh, well, really a function on sigma. You know, this, um, so, I, so U is, just an element, this is the, the gauge action, okay? Okay, so the moduli space, yeah, yeah. Sorry, ah, okay, sorry, okay, okay. So the moduli space, the moduli space, I'm just going to um, say a bit more explicitly. Um, the moduli space I'm going to write it like this. So in this case, the homotopy classes are just uh, it's just the topology of uh, a line bundle and sections of the line bundle. It's just determined by the degree of the line bundle, which we call D. Okay, so D is the degree. Of L, okay, which you can detect by integrating the connection and so on. It's going to be, oh, sorry, it's going to the, uh, the curvature of the connection, okay. So the, okay, so the model, the model space is going to be, so pair, these pairs, okay, such that they satisfy V1 and V2, okay. Okay, now the, you know, phi has to be in this homotopy class, it has to have, so it's a holomorphic section of a line bundle. Now you are, if you know a little bit about algebraic geometry, we're dealing with uh, just uh, a line bundle on, uh, on an algebraic curve, okay? So a holomorphic section will have um, 
a device of zeros, okay? And the degree will have, will be just D, okay? You count the number of zeros with multiplicity and it will be D, okay? And now you define by, by this, um, by this gauge group with this action that I just indicated there, okay? So it's just, so I'm going to call this um, in here, sometimes VD, it's the, the set of uh, vortex solutions before you do the, this quotient thing, okay? Right, okay, so now I'm going to show you something which is important. If you integrate this equation V2, V2 over sigma, Okay, so what do you get? So you get, so there's the term that comes from integrating the curvature. Okay, it's going to be in my conventions two pi d, where d is this degree. Okay, there's going to be a term which is coming from integrating the 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 L two norm, right? The L the you know giving the L two norm of phi. Okay, so uh, when I put here the right constant, it's going to be yeah the L two norm phi, okay, and then there's the other term, which is the, the term that uh, uh, Oscar was complaining about, okay, so it's going to be that tau over two, and now the integral of sigma, yeah, the integral of sigma is just the area, the area of the surface, okay, and now this is zero, this is what the, in the what, what I get, okay, but now we know that uh, this norm has to be non-negative, yeah. Okay, so we get some, uh, we get this, we learned that if the equation holds, yeah, we must have uh, these inequalities satisfied. Okay. Okay, so we also know that uh, when there is a, an equality here, the only thing this can be equal is when phi is zero, okay? So when phi is zero, it means that uh, the Higgs field has just disappeared, just the zero section. And you only have, uh, yeah, you might still have some degrees of freedom with the connection because there might be some different connections uh, on, the, uh, on, the same, uh, on the same line bundle L, yeah? Okay? So, um, yeah. Okay, so the equality case means, so this is what uh, sometimes people say, it's, so the case of dissolved vortices. So this case is the sort of easiest case to study vortices. It's like the, the Higgs field doesn't count, it's a zero section, but there might be something in the connection. That, so, this, so this has the flavor of studying flat connection, which is also an industry, but it also shows that uh, studying vortices is, is kind of a, um, a richer subject because you are, you know, you, you, you get these kinds of flat connections in a way as uh, in these limits, yeah? So here you're studying not only uh, the, the, the gauge field, but also the matter coupled to the gauge field. Okay. Okay, so now uh, first theorem, okay. So usually people, uh, uh, quote Bradlow, uh, but the, he was not the first person who showed this on that on a compact surface. Um, when this equality is satisfied, actually, I'm going to write it in a different way. So, so if the the so the equality is satisfied, but the strict inequality, okay. Okay. Then, um, then you have the following, and this is something that I'm just going to state, and uh, and Os uh, Oscar this afternoon maybe or yeah is going to explain why this actually works. Okay, so the point is that the modal space which I defined this way. Okay, so here, you know, G was the group of gauge transformations, but this, this is the automorphism group of the uh, well, like I, I said, of the principal bundle, but you can also say of the line bundle with the Hermitian structure. So it's um, 
about unit tree gauge transformations. And now I'm going to say that when this condition is uh, assumed, this is some kind of this, this has uh, plays a role of a stability condition in GIT. If you know about these things in algebraic geometry, and, and I think Oscar is going to also talk about the analogy and other people later in the program. Okay, so this is the um, yeah. Then you can you can do the following: you can uh, make a, a, a bijection between this quotient and another quotient. Okay, of um, pairs a phi, where now yeah you impose the first equation. Okay, you assume that yeah so phi is not zero, and uh, has the right topology. Okay, but now you're going to define define uh, define by the group of uh, complex gauge transformations. Before I said that I I was identifying identifying the yeah the a group of uh, gauge transformations with the so maps to u1 from the surface to u1 uh yeah um but now i complexify that which means that they now any uh, you know maps from sigma to c star any complex number which is not zero but, okay so the the complexification of u1 is uh, c star yeah and i'm i'm taking the so here i'm taking the uh, the quotient by that bigger group that contains this one as yeah okay and here i'm not uh, i'm not saying that i i am uh, imposing the second vortex equation okay so these this kind of quotients they are a bit easier to understand okay and this is uh, usually how people compute these moduli spaces they use this thing called the hitchin kobayashi correspondence To reformulate this problem, which is more like analytic, to something which is more algebraic, and then they they can figure out what the modular space is. So here, in this case, it's uh, it's kind of uh, easy to understand that uh, in this case the so basically we are uh, yeah so the what comes out here is that the modular space is going to be the symmetric product of sigma d times okay this is the you take the product of sigma d times the Cartesian product. And then you identify the copies by permutation. Are you dividing by the action of the symmetric group on the on the copies? Okay. So this is an action which is not free. Okay. There are fixed points. There are yeah. There's some stabilizers and so on. But but the but the quotient but this quotient is going to be smooth. This is a, uh, some kind of miracle of topology in two dimensions. And these are smooth manifold. So these are our, our modular space of vortices. Very concrete. And it's going to be uh, just on the nose a, a complex manifold, because the the complex uh, the complex structure of sigma uh, induces uh, induces a, a complex structure on the on the symmetric product. This is something that people that have studied the the geometry of linear systems on curves use all the time. Yeah. Okay. So the um, so picture, let, let me go back to my surface. And the picture is the following, that uh, we have actually, you know, uh, we, we, the theorem is basically saying that um, a divisor, so an effective divisor of degree D, any divisor that has degree D, uh, is made in, uh, into, uh, so corresponds to a, a vortex already modeled the gauge, the gauge equivalence, which means that I specify here some points with multiplicity. So maybe here I want to put two points on top of each other, like a fatter point. Okay. And there's going to be um, a, a vortex configuration where the where this, this field phi vanishes exactly on the support of the divisor. Okay. So here we have these, these, uh, these lumps that you, you, you saw on my little movie, right? Here on the fat point, you see something which is, looks like the configuration where they, they, are, they were on top of each other. They have this kind of funny torus, so this kind of circle, circle symmetry. Okay? So this is like the, the energy structure, which is a, some kind of finer information about the field configuration, but already the, the location of the zeros tell you uh, completely what solution you're talking about. Okay? So phi 
will determine some divisor of zeros. And this is, um, in fact, a divisor of zeros. And this is basically already determining this, the solution. Okay? Right. You know, the point is that this, uh, this modular space, so here it's very easy to describe uh, how we should think of it as a complex manifold. But uh, what you already started to see in Martin's lecture is that there's going to be more structures. There's going to be a metric. There's going to be this, this so-called L2 geometry. So this is my next topic. So um, I'm going to try to explain a little, well, may at least state how people can describe this L2 geometry. So the L2, so describing, describing the L2 geometry on MH, okay? Um, okay, so first of all, we need um, to say, so we need to have a model for the tangent space, okay? This is a bit more complicated than in Martin's lecture because of this gauge symmetry. So the, so I, I call um, AL the space of um, connections in L, okay? And then the space of fields, you know, where these, uh, where these pairs belong is just a product of uh, uh, connections and um, sections, okay? So, um, Okay, so here I should, uh, yeah, I should say unitary. So, um, so this is going to be, um, um, so a tangent, uh, uh, so the tangent space at a point is going to be uh, a vector space, which is, uh, yeah, one forms um, plus sections in this linear case. So here you've been with Watson Lee on a vector bundle. You can add the sections to get another section. Okay. So here the so it's it's going to be so so, it's, so here you also have a complex structure. Okay so um, I'm going to call an element here a dot phi dot okay and uh, yeah and the and the complex structure is just taking the hot star in the metric of sigma, okay? So it turns a one form into another one form, yeah? And uh, I'm going to multiply i by, uh, sorry, um, uh, yeah, phi dot by i, okay? So this is the Hodge operator of G sigma, okay? So the L2 metric, Okay, upstairs. So this is the so this is the L two metric on uh, not on the modular space but on this space of fields, which is infinite dimensional. Okay, and here the metric is going to be quite easy to describe. It's just going to be, um, yeah, the generalization in uh, in this gauge theoretics setting to the metric that you would call the L two metric in in uh, functional analysis. Okay, the. Okay. Okay. So now, so this is, so it's a metric. It's uh, formally uh, Kähler with respect to this complex structure. So upstairs, you deal. You have to deal with infinite dimensions, but the this geometry is very easy. Okay. And now the the point is that uh, well, when you now want to understand the metric on the quotient, this is where things get more complicated. Because this quotient, as I think also Oscar will explain, this this really a symplectic quotient, yeah. And in the symplectic in the symplectic quotient, you get an induced uh, metric. In this case, it's going to be a Keller metric, okay. And now you don't you won't get uh, formulas just so easy like as this one, okay. So you can, for example, fix a gauge and then look upstairs how the metric looks like, and you know, and then you have something like yeah. But uh, it's very hard in general, unlike the complex structure, to say what either the symplectic structure or the remaining structure look like 
you know, on the modular space. Right? Yeah, okay. So can I, um, I could in principle, okay, let me just to connect with the Martin's lecture tomorrow, one minute, okay? Yeah, okay, okay. So I'm, I, I'm going to, I, I have just a list of ways people have of describing the metric in the moduli space. So there's going to be some techniques, some, yeah, some kind of tweaks. The first one, is um, so a localization technique, which is uh, which was introduced by uh, Strong, and uh, yeah, and then also Samuels, so Samuels um, basically picked the, the, this idea and uh, yeah, so um, developed it a little bit more. Okay, so, so this is, uh, yeah, so the, this is what Martin is going to explain in a, a lot of detail. So let me just see, let me just state just very briefly. Okay, this is, so th this is done. Uh, this is done by some uh, manipulation of currents. And, uh, and using something very basic and powerful, Stokes theorem. Okay. So what you get, you get, so you, what you get, um, so, um, so you get, so you get a formula, for the metric or for the, um, for the synthetic structure, okay, um, uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, um, uh, the, the fields at the, um, well, okay, so maybe I'll write the, so the vortex solutions uh, at the, at this effective divisor, okay? So usually when you look at the formula for this L2 metric, you need to understand the fields. For example, solve some equations to maybe to, to plug the solutions in this formula, right? And then you have to integrate over sigma those solutions. It's, it looks a bit hopeless, right? Okay, but the point is that you can actually, so there's this, this technique that allows you to uh, extract the metric in terms of, of what actually happens only at, at those points. Okay, so in a way you still have to understand the solutions a little bit to some order, but only locally at, the, at, at those points. So this is already a big, uh, yeah, um, this already helps a lot, but this is not the, this, you won't get just a formula for the metric in the sense of a closed formula uh, in terms of coordinates, it's not, it's not like that. But you can uh, use this technique to, um, you know, for some purposes. Um, okay, so I think I might just stop here before I get to the other um, ways of describing the metric, okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so, the to so uh, intuitively, the tor is a, is a parameter that is going to control the, the, the size of the vortex, okay? So it's like, um, so I, I drew the, these kind of the lumps like this. So when, you, when, you, when you make this tor vary, these, these, you know, you're going to see the shapes doing, you know, like uh, do, going a bit broader or, or becoming spikes, okay? So you can, can control this kind of, so this parameter is giving you like the size of an uh, individual vortex, if you like. Uh, yes, the, yeah, yeah. So the, when I say the metric, this is with all the data uh, uh, given. So the metric, so the, the L2 metric depends on the metric fix on sigma, the, uh, the tall, all of these, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, 
for different for different choice of tall that still satisfy this stability condition. For example, as a complex manifold, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same complex manifold, uh, you know, the symmetric product. But now, the, the, but now as a as a Kähler manifold or as a symplectic manifold, it's going to be different. The structure is going to be to it's going to be, if you like, a one parameter family of uh, Kähler metrics parameterized by this tall. If you're happy with that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I am going to tell you a bit about that, not even tomorrow, but on Thursday. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So the question, the, the point is that I'm going to do, uh, I mean, not, uh, not just, um, uh, yeah, um, quantum mechanics or ge geometric quantization or canonic quantization, but I'm going to do supersymmetric quantum mechanics in a way that I'm going to uh, specify in more detail when I, I'm talking about that. Uh, so, so my lectures have two parts. There's un, until, uh, yeah, so today, tomorrow, I'm going to do the Keller quantization. And then I'm going to do the, the, sec, the canonic quantization on Thursday and Friday. And uh, your question, I think you're going to see what I mean by that. Okay. Yes? Uh, it's what you would like it to be, right? It's the, 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 the integral of the potential energy. Yeah. Except that, uh, yeah, except that I. Yeah, so, so the question was, the, the right order is, what was the Hamiltonian for the, uh, for the first order flow? It's the, yeah, it's just the, um, uh, yeah, the, the, um, I mean, so your modular space is potential energy integrated over sigma. Yeah, the, no, no, that can't be right because I mean, your modular space is a space of critical points of that. So the difference. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. So. So, let, so yeah. So let's say, let's say. So in what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah. With the. Yeah. Okay. So the. Um, what I'm going to do really with the joint concession, I'm not going to discuss the. I'm not going to discuss the observables. But the, so the point is that I'm. Uh, yeah. Uh, there is going to be some kind of. If you want to really see dynamics with the what I what I showed the yes. motion, so and so and, and interpret what I'm going to tell you as some kind of um, quantum mechanics of that, right? You need to do some perturbation. So the as you know, yeah, so otherwise the the potential energy is going to be constant. Yeah. So my question was, but there's going to be other, but there's space. going to be in this setting, there's going to be also some um, situations. Your, your beloved two sphere, right? right? Where you could consider other types of uh, observables that you could quantize perfectly well and uh, make sense of the, yeah, the quantum um, <sighs> operators and so on. Was it? Yeah, did so you, Martin is saying that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of ch cheating a little bit because uh, did, you know, did you nothing of this is going to be. Did, did, you just, did you just take, take lambda to be bigger than one? Did you just take? The, the usual Ginzburg Lando energy, but away from critical coupling. That, that would be so the point is that this thing is going to, uh, yeah, it's supposed to work at close to criticality, but not criticality. Criticality, there's a, the dynamics is trivial. Okay. It's not big. It's uh, it's sort of close to small, close to critical. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's as much. Something. I hope this is enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, so no, so yeah so we we have uh, arranged this um, timetable which is a kind of it's uh, static over the two weeks so it's uh, every day it's the same and then the slots are going to be at the same time so you just need to remember which slot so now we're going to have so today the plan is the three first slots and then the the, the last slot okay so it means that we have now a break of I think one and a half hours yep. yeah. 